Greetings to all of you. My dear sisters and brothers and my dear friends and all of you. All are welcome to my new broadcasting of God's goodness, daily reflections that shines light on personal darkness. This is your pastor Yeti. Today we're going to talk about renewed true worship. And the scriptures is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 8 to 18. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over the death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may be revealed in our mortal body. So then, that is at work in us, but life is at work in you. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. With that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly, We are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an entirely glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 8 to 14. I'll say that again for other people that maybe just uh, jumped in in this broadcasting. Hard-pressed but not crushed, perplexed but not in despair, persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. Anyone who thinks the Bible doesn't face suffering head-on hasn't read it. Yet, while outwardly wasting away, those who draw on Christ within, who listen to God's Holy Spirit, speak to them through His Word, and who gather with the Church, Christ's body can be renewed day after day. And the author will tell us a story about... Robert Rogers and Robert Rogers maybe for some people who will know him but this is the story his entire family drowned in a 2003 Kansas flash flood in a moment he lost his beloved wife and all four of his children this Christ centered family went to church Hide it, read the Bible, and pray together. After the disaster, Robert entered a dark world of job like suffering. I mean, of job like suffering, excuse me. We need only to read scripture or look around us or live long enough in order to learn that trusting God doesn't word of all evil and suffering. He never said it would. In fact, he said just the opposite, but with a promise. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16 verse 33. 
on the worst day of his life, his ten children taken from him. Job worshipped God. On the worst day of his life, when a flood swept away his wife and four children, Robert Rogers turned to God in worship. He told me he did so because he felt his loss so deeply that he could not lose the one object he had left to grab onto, God. He couldn't function, couldn't go on living without worshiping God. My beautiful people, believers share common ground with unbelievers. We feel mutual horror at the reality, depth, and duration of human and animal suffering. We share a conviction that this kind of pain is terribly wrong and that it should be made right. Consider what Paul wrote, the Apostle Paul. Our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Roman 8 verse 18 Well, a critic may say, might say, such affirmations reflect the naive idealism of someone insulted from evil and suffering. But the Apostle Paul made these statements. He'd suffered through hunger, thirst, cold, imprisonment, murderous mob attacks and repeated beatings and floggings five times within an inch of his life. He described himself as exposed to death again and again. This is what Paul means by our present sufferings and our light and momentary troubles. Paul insists that our sufferings will result in our greater good. God's people will be better off eternally because they suffer temporarily. From Paul's perspective, this trade-off will in eternal proof to be a great bargain. In fact, the argument for the greater good may be the strongest biblical case for God's permitting evil and suffering. However, this requ- requires trust on our part. Since the promised greater good is future and we can't see it in the present, faith is called for. Since we do not know everything God knows, but instead of trusting ourselves and our flawed judgment, we can choose to trust the one who has an eternal plan of sovereign grace and has gone to inconvenible lengths to see that it will be accomplished. (coughs) Let us pray. Lord, you tell us that though it may seem heavy compared to eternal glory, our current suffering is light and momentary. You tell us not to fix our eyes on popular culture, not on fleeting accomplishments and wealth, but upon what is eternal. What will still matter a billion years from now Remind us to focus on you, or soon, our soon returning Savior, instead of on our suffering. Give us the eyes of faith. Don't wait until tomorrow, Lord, for we need faith today, this very moment. Amen. Let us live with a compassionate heart for those who are passing our life, for those who are near, our loved ones. Let us look with a loving heart so that we, if there is a need, we can give comfort and help them to trust in God. May God bless your heart, my dear ones. This is your Pastor Yeti.
Bye.